Good afternoon and welcome to Carlam Cymru Revision Sessions. This session will focus on electronics AS level and will be presented by Mr. Jonathan Williams from Ysgol Maes Gwendres. The session will last about 50, 45 minutes where the teacher will go through the relevant subject content. If you have any questions, please use the question and answer section and we will endeavour to answer your questions during the session. The session will be recorded with a recording and any relevant resources uploaded to the ISCOL website in the Carlam Cymru area. OK, thank you very much. As I said, um, Mr. Jonathan Williams, uh, teach electronics. So over the next um, month or so, uh, eight sessions and I will take you through the whole main parts of the EDUCAS electronics course. So today I'll be focusing on uh, logic. Uh, to do with logic gates, with multiplexers, and uh, with Carnot maps and Boolean. Okay, uh, I'd like to draw everybody's attention. There are some equations which you do need to memorize. Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of 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 that is really, really essential. Please remember it is not given. So if you try and remember VIR, ver, 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 I always try and tell people when they're sitting down in the exam, write that down on your data sheet next door to all your other equations. Um, so it's ready to go. I've marked a lot of papers where someone has done that equation wrong and it's running through the whole paper and so they've lost lots of marks. So VIR, remember that please. And please also be able to rearrange that so that you have I would be equal to V over R. OK, and R would be equal to V over I. All right, so make sure you know that one. Uh, today's session uh, will be focusing mainly on the Boolean. So things which aren't given, which you do need to memorize, which we'll come to. Uh, the Boolean expressions. OK, so we're going to get Boolean now for then. Of the dinner, the ac and gates and then the uh, or and uh, using the or gates. We've also got the De Morgan's theorem, which is the break the line to change the sign theorem. All right, again, that is not given in your data sheets and please, please remember it. Um, during these sessions, uh, it would be handy if you have a data booklet in front of you. OK, so when I make reference to the equations, you can have a quick scan to see where they are. Um, always tell people um, with the data sheets, you have the equations, but you don't have to do it. You just need to say, you ask me to do it, but you don't have to do it. Okay? Um, then you have a session in my mind. All right. Um, so, the three of you are here, Gyda bwlian i hunan, a gyda switches, sy'n creu logic. Right, the first thing please remember, in order to create ones and zeros, is that we have to use pull up and pull down switches. All right, uh, so we've got a resistor here with a switch on the top, okay, and on the right hand side we've got a resistor, gwrthedd gyda switch ar y gwylod. Uh, now in both of these cases, if you look at the one on the left first of all, right, there's a, at the minute, on the one on the left, that is giving a logic zero. OK, my zero votes, votes then it. The switch closes. When that switch closes, notice that the voltage has gone high. Switch is opened and back down to zero. OK, so though that switch there is acting like when it's being closed, it pulls the voltage up. Now, the one on the right there is we've got the resistor on top, go to the other top, switch is open. Now at the minute, OK, switch is now closed. We've got a zero. Open that switch and it goes back high. OK, so you have to be able to use that quite a lot in in lots of exams, OK, in electronics. Dial, OK, you have to understand in order to get a logic zero or a logic one, um, how you would able be able to get it by using these switches. OK. Um, they are normally attached to logic gates, OK, but we can also use them, attach them to transistors. Right, the logic gates, OK, I'm going to 
very nice in the rain. You have to remember how to draw all of these. None of them are given. Um, my top revision technique for this, OK, would be probably to on a sheet of paper, you would write down all the names of the gates. So you've got the not, not you've got the and or nand. OK, say so nid, ak, nay, niax. OK, you would write them down on a sheet of paper. And then uh, from memory, you would try and draw the symbol next door to each one of the gates. OK, nilllun or or gatihinan. And then do the truth table, OK? Um, it's essential that you learn all of them. Of all of these gates, the most common mistakes I see is when people do the X or and the X no gates, OK? They are the trickiest of all the truth tables. Get that X or a ni A, OK? Um, you've got the zero, zero gives you the zero, zero, one, and the one, zero give you the ones. And the one one gives you the zero and then the x no is just the opposite okay now please also remember how to draw the boolean for each one so anything with a line on top of it means it is a not gate of some sort so you've got the and you've got the o and is with a dot o is with plus sign and then we've got a nand gate so there's a line on top okay and then with the no gate, the line is on top again, indicating a not function. And then with the X no, notice that there's a line on top as well. OK, also, please remember when you're drawing gates, uh, if there's a circle at the end of the gate itself, such as the no there, the X no there, with the nand one there. OK, those circles represent a not function. So please, 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 Make sure you learn all of those tables. Um, OK, this is something that you can play back. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube or whatever, OK, you can stop, you can pause at any time. So what I've done here is a little uh, sort of animation which shows basically this first one here on the top left shows the AND gate. So you need basically two ones to give you the one. OK, moving over to the uh, the NIAC, the uh, NAND gate. Basically, if you've got a zero, you will always end up with a one. But the O gate, if there's a one on either one, then you will get a one in, the, in that one. And an A. Uh, they've got the NO gate, OK? Two zeros will give you a one on that one. OK, that's the way to remember it. Um, coming down to the X no, that's where you got the two ones and the two zeros. OK, we'll give you the one. Going down to the bottom functions. OK, the not get a nid. OK, a one gives you a zero, opposites. All right, and what I've done there, that's a handy little gate to remember. OK, it's the uh, NIAC, it's the NAND gate, uh, which is commonly used to replace other gates. OK, so as it is at the minute, um, the two inputs have been tied together, OK, and linked to one switch. So that gives you exactly the same function as a NOT gate does. All right, but please remember, if you're using one input to trigger a gate, then the two inputs have to be tied together. OK, that is essential for it to work. OK, going on to uh, examples of what they like asking in, in exams themselves. Uh, the first one here is a showing some gates. And with these gates, you then have to use a truth table basically to find the functions which come out of it. Uh, what I always tell students to do in an exam situation, if they're doing something like this, just to stop mistakes, is, is maybe draw the truth table, OK? Newch a gwirlen drws nesa i yr adoi chi yn tynillino. So os bod dyfu y ni e i fynyn, I've got the no gate over here, OK? What I'd be tempted to do in an exam, is just quickly write down the truth table next door to it. Okay. Oh, 
And then I got the XOR gate. I got a NIA right here. So I just do the not 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 one one not and the one one. Okay, and I'll just quickly sketch in the truth table. Okay, next door to it. Uh, it'll help. So on this particular function, um, it asks us first of all what logic it gives the output of Q1. So this is where you have to learn from memory basically what function that is. So if you've got all ones, two ones gives you a zero, right? That will give you the NAND gate. Okay, so the NIACHE. Anything to do with a zero always gives you a one with a NIAC. And then complete the truth tables for the Q2. So this is where it's handy. If you've done the truth table next door to it, you can now look to see what's going into Q2 is your A and B. And so I can check with my truth table. So A0 and a zero will give A0. A0 and a one will give me a one. A one and a zero will give me a one. So I'm checking it with my truth table. OK, and the one and the one will give me a zero. OK, and then I'm looking at Q3. So Q3, I can look at this truth table, which I've done next door to it, and then I can compare. So Q1 and Q2 are going in. So I can, I've got a one and a zero going in, so I can compare it with my truth table. OK, which will give me that function. OK. So top tip, always put the truth table next door to the gate that you're trying to work out. OK, Boolean expressions. OK, so just remind you uh, that an, a dot next door some, something would mean an AND function. OK, and an OR function is represented by the plus sign. So in this one, it's asking us to write, write down the Boolean expressions for Q1, Q2 and Q3 in terms of A and B. So if I'm looking at Q1 and that logic gate, which is there, where well, we said that Q1 is a NAND gate, OK, NIAC you So my arrival in good value So my A and the B will go into it. OK, and the function for to show in NIAC a NAND gate is the dot with the line on top. So Q2, OK, so Q2 I've said is the XOR function. So A and B are going in. So I need to know how to draw a XOR. So an A function has got the plus sign, okay, which is an OR function, XOR, but the circle around it gives you the exclusive bit, which makes it special. That's the XOR. Then the Q3 one, right, now what is the question is given you, given us, asks us, is in terms of A and B. So for this particular one, uh, Q1 and A2, so what we've got is A and B is going in, the line on top, because that's the NIAC and NAND. OK, and then the it's a NO gate. So a NO gate would be a plus with a line going over everything. OK, that is the Q2 in terms of A and B. OK, I'm going to put a line over everything as well. OK, because this one was a NO function. Right, looking at Q3, it's asking us what output would give us the same as the Q3 one there. So what gives me two ones with a one? OK, and what we've got there is the AND. OK. Uh, you can pause at any time if you're watching back on YouTube, OK, and you can revise and have, have a look at this one. All right, as we go along, so that would be the end. Save ACK. Right, uh, as I said, the NIAC function and the NAN function is really, really important one. Um, you have to memorize these as well. So, um, what you can do is instead of using a NOT gate, you can use a NAND gate to wire it up on a chip. So it gives you exactly the same function. OK, uh, the reason why NAND gates are used is if you are building something 
and you're just using NAND gates, in the end, it's going to be cheaper than having mm -hmm. loads of different different chips. Okay, so uh, the NOT gate, okay, you draw by using one NAND gate, the two inputs tied together. Okay, and gate, two NAND gates, inputs, two inputs, remember the second one, two tied together. Or gate is like the diamond formation, all right? Two inputs tied together on the input. Okay, and then the no gate is just like the or, but with an extra one at the end. Right, so all of those four, you have to memorize it. So again, examination technique revision. I would probably just on a piece of paper write down these symbols to start with. Okay, uh, and then try and draw the NAND gates. Go back and look at your notes. Look at the page. Compare basically what you've done to how you draw them. Okay, learn them. Um, when it comes to um, using NAND gates, remember as well that if you have two NAND gates following each other, like so, they will always cancel each other. Okay, so a double knot, okay, a knot and knot will always cancel each other and they are called redundant gates. Okay, and we'll have a look at an example here. Right, so with this particular one, um, again, what I like to say to people when they're doing an exam, all right, is maybe sketch down the NAND gate functions next door to each one, right, before you actually try and draw it. So what I would do, this is an AND gate, so I'm going to do it in so I'm going to do it in the end. I would draw that in to start with. Okay, there's the not one, okay, uh, the O one. Okay, so this is all from memory, just putting the, the non gate equivalence mill, right? And then with the no gate in it. So hopefully you can see that if you know these from memory, then it's going to save you a lot of time in an exam. All right. Now that I've done that, I'm going to try and join join them all together. So I've got my A, my B, and my C. So if you've done that already, then you're less likely to make mistakes during the exam when you're under pressure. So what I'm going to try and do now is replace the gates with what I've drawn. OK, so the first gate, this one next, is drawn in already. So the other input from that one, I'll trace it back. OK, so I can see that one comes back to B. All right, so if I'm going down to draw the NOT gate, I can see that's coming from B as well. OK, and then I'm coming in with C. Okay, and I've drawn the equivalent ready, so I just copy it. Okay, and then finally the last one. So these two were joined together. Okay, to do the Get. All right, so na kubo ga davi vna. Be fitli na ar tishkoli gwel osrubeth and kanslo gileth. Okay, is there any cancellation happening? So I'm looking for the double not gates. Uh, so I've got this one cancelling with that. Okay, because I've got two not gates. Okay, I've got that one cancelling with that one, and I've got that one cancelling with that one. So they are redundant pairs. OK, so we don't go here regularly. Right, so what I would do if you're watching this back, OK, maybe have a look at it. Try putting in from memory the gates themselves and then redraw it. Right, Boolean algebra. Um, again, these are ones that you have to memorize. All right. Um, 
what you can do, all of the ones on the left hand side, all of these are just things, you know, get someone to test you basically with uh, what A and one gives you. Um, if you're trying to work these things out, remember that AND gates, if I've got an A and a 1, what it actually means is you have a switch and that switch is A, and then you have a 1, which means a switch which is always closed. So what you would have, you would have a switch A, that switch can open, okay, or it can close, right? But this one here, if it's a one, is constantly closed. So A and a one depend on if A is open for a signal to be able to go through from one end to the other end. If you're doing something to do with an OR gate, anything to do with an OR gate is basically anything in parallel, right? So if you've got an A, uh, shall we say, A OR in not A, okay, there'll be two switches in parallel, so if one of them is, shall we say, not A, and that is open, then A, which is opposite, will be closed. So you can try and work things like this out. So there's always going to be a path going from one end to the other one, because always one of those switches will be closed. Okay, so if A opens, the not A will close. So you'll always have a path, which means you'll end up with a signal, which means a one. Okay. Um, these two functions here, please look in your data sheet, all right? Especially the top one, that is in your data sheet as a simplification. Um, the way that you remember this one is that if you have two letters and they're opposite to each other, so you've got an A and then you've got a not A, right? So one is the opposite of the other one. One is with another term, in this case it's with B, the one which is next door to the B is basically get will get cancelled, okay? And so you're left with just A, B, right? But it's basically in your data sheet um, and in, in some simplifications, you need to look back and remember it uh, to find that one out. Uh, the De Morgan, as I said, is not in your data sheet as well. So the law Gadar De Morgan is Osmar Sinet and Tori Hin Newid Araroid. So if you break the line, okay, you will always change the sign, right? But if you break the line, remember that the lines will stay above those letters. Okay, so a couple of examples for you uh, to try and sort of memorize and work out. Not C and the C. So if you're stuck in an exam, think to yourself, right, I've got two switches. One of them is going to be not C, and then the other one will be C. Now, because the one of these is opposite of the other one, if not C is closed, C will be open, right? So you're never going to be able to go from one end to the other one. There'll always be a gap there, which gives you the zero. You've got the not D or one. That or one means there's always a path. Okay, so your answer will always be one. Now here's the special case, this one again. Here's the special case one. So what I've got is a B term. That B term is a not B in this one. So looking back at it, two terms, one is opposite of the other one. Bang, it is gone, all right? So that we'd be left with not A and the B, okay. Uh, the next one is being able to open a bracket up. So this depends a little bit on your math skills. So what you can do there is open the bracket by multiplying the terms out. So that would be a not D multiplied by the C. Or, so I'm going to multiply now the D, not D with the D itself. Um, now in this case, what you should be able to recognize is that not D and a D, okay, that will cancel, that will never ever give you a signal. So bang, that will have gone, which will leave you with not DC. Right, so those are some Boolean ones, right? As I said, yeah, test yourself, get someone to test you basically with, with the Booleans. Okay, going on to the De Morgan. Right, um, this one is a two marker. Uh, De Morgans will vary in exams between two marks and maybe sometimes up to four marks. What examiners are always after with the Morgans is that you show every line 
in terms of your simplification. OK, a lot of people will sometimes jump and try and do one or two steps basically because they can see what's coming. But when you're doing those steps, sometimes you make mistakes. So per can't have him in need for him. It's just Tori a Hinech just as that ear seen that he dach. I'm going to break that line, OK, which is next door to that C. So if I break that one, remember the law, you break the line, you change the sign. So that dot is now going to turn to a plus. OK, now you've got to be careful now with what's left. So if I break that line there, there's still a knot after over top of that C. That AC has still got a line. OK, but if it's broken there. I got a double line, OK? Don't be tempted to jump steps. If you have double lines, remember what double lines do, double knots. OK, they cancel each other out. OK, so what I've got. Is that those double lines? So I'm showing if in Dongos, but a doily net now and can slightly lift mass. Now, I could leave it like that. that will probably get you one mark. Um, now, in this case, what you should be able to see is that special case again. OK, there's the not C and there's the C. So one is opposite of the other one. So what's going to happen is that that C next door to the A is going to be cancelled. OK, bit of a harsh question and only giving you two marks for that one. But they probably expected you OK uh, to get to the final cancellation as well. OK, so again with the Morgans, essential it is just do one step in cam or a trot. Pidoch but a sort of temptation. You sort of need your or in cam your camera. The popeth in cam or a trot. OK, so then I run land even with your cano maps. Um, be the cano maps and call it Roy Ike. OK, be no, be them ready to get in or no. You will never have to draw that cano map for you. OK, with the numbers on it, OK, it will always be given. You'll be either be a three bit or a four bit. Uh, what you'll do is you will put ones into it and, and you'll just try and cancel them out. So, for example, uh, what you should be able to recognize is if I put a one in a kind of map, that is represented by not C. Uh, what you've got there is an A and a B, right? So you should be able to make a Boolean expression for any one of these boxes, right? Um, whole point of using Kano maps is that they will always end up in giving you some sort of cancellation, right? Uh, to make something simpler, okay? So you can't put them through that. So be more like you try to group up the right? So you will always try and group. Now you always groups in terms of twos or fours or eights, OK, even numbers. Um, or maybe if there's one on its own and you can't group with this anything at all, all right? Yeah, it happens. Uh, it's rare, but it can do. So you're always trying to group. and It doesn't matter if you're overlapping sort of ones together. So for example, in this one, you've got a group of four there. Then you've got another group of four on the top. It doesn't matter that the ones have been used in another group, OK? So you're always trying to group as many of them together. Um, but yes, look in your notes again. Uh, there are certain things that you can do with counter maps, like you can go ones, for example, and then go round the back. I call it the round back technique, right, where those two ones there can sometimes or will be grouped with ones on the other side. All right, so you're always looking for groups. So I'll give you an example. Oh, sorry, do an exam. So truth table has been used. And what you're going to do is try and map this out. So what you're going to do is look for basically all the ones and then try and group them onto the map itself. OK, so it's only true the horn. So here I'm looking for a not C. So the not C is on the zero line. OK, I got a one and the zero on the B. So one and the zero on the B. OK, and I got the not C. OK, going on to this one here. OK, I got a one on the C and a north on the one. 
and the other two as well. So I'll quickly map those out. OK, so that is what you would get basically from all of those. Now I'm trying to go in a group here. So I've got no fours, but what I've got, I've got a group of two. And I've got another group of two. OK, so if I'm going to look at those two, I'm looking for common terms. What is the same? So looking at those, they've got a common term of C. OK, and on the tops here, right, the common term there is the one, which is the A. And then this one. OK, we should be missing a phrase in the net. So we should be missing a phrase in the net. a B. OK, I'm going to be a dim A. OK, so I have a bit back in the net. All right, so. At the big one, I'm going to any mail. So it's C and A represent one of them, or the other term would be B and A. Okay, Bwysig, but in Roy Meun, a nay, that it's important that you put in the or term because basically there are two boxes. So it is either one term or the other term is where the ones are going to be represented. Okay. Right, going on to a four. Now these are a little bit more uh, uh, complicated. All right, so you would basically be given the following expression, and those expressions then would have to go into the table itself. So if I look at uh, each one of these in turn, I've got the D, C, B. Now what I can do, or stop me from making mistakes, is basically a D, a C, and a B. So what I'm looking for is a D, C, okay, which is on the one, one bit, and a B. So I'm looking for Bs where the ones are. So this one will correspond to this line, okay, and where all the Bs are, be there and be there right and what i'll do sometimes in an exam i'll tell people give a little tick above it once you've done it so, so you know yeah i've done that one i, I can move on so i'm in sav but in to school are with zero a zero when with the b and e and i'm with the not a and zero so in the school are line so my dc line and zero zero the vivan in when i'm with the a b and e and I'm at the VA, not A. So we shall add um, box number. Okay, Renessa, I'm at the V1, 0, 1. So I'm looking for 1, 0 on the DC line. So DC line is 1, 0 on this line. And where the A's are, so A is on that one and it is on that one. Okay. So tick back, it does don't got to be with the A Right, so a D, I've got a one, I've got a B, and I've got a zero. Okay, so D, the B and the not D, so I'm one zero line. Okay, so I'm looking at this line, one zero line, and where the Ds happen, okay, it will be that box which is there. Okay, and the last one, I've got a one, I've got a zero, zero, and a one. So basically, we've then finished the lamo in R zero. So we just got a line guillard. We have dim B, not B, and a one. And there's a one there already. Okay, so no worries. Right, groupings go gaver huna. So trohen and the group of pedwar. Ah, we then we have the in in van hen. Then we need a group of emel doi. There's a group of two for that one now that one on the top you might be tempted to think oh it's on its own but it's not what you can do because then the group of where good okay so it's around the back technique right um now we just come simplifications again so i think the school um basically afraid in what is common for that what term there 
So what I've got in on that line there is a D C. So it's on that line and then what's common on the top one is the A itself. OK, sorry, and not C. OK, so it's not C. So I've got a group of four. Right, a group of four. What is common for all of those? Um, just going in, there's a D. So they're all basically on the D line. So, and then on the top one, I'm looking and it's on the B. And then if I'm looking at the top and the bottom one, which are grouped together. OK, so what's common for that one? Well, there's a B, they're in the B, not A column. OK, and then looking on the left hand side, there's A not C. OK, so I can go back in and write the whole function down. OK, so that's the first function, remember, or. So I've written one function, or it's the next one. Or it's. Last function. Uh, one thing I always remember, the more terms you group together, the less letters that you actually have. All right. So in this case, if you've got four ones together, there are two terms. Uh, if you have in this group of four, four by four um, kind of map. If there's a group of two, there would be three terms. If there's one on its own, so for example, if I put there was one here. Right, so if that one was on its own, and you can't group it with anything, that would be a group of four, right? So to describe that one, that would be a not D and a C, and it would be a not B and a not A. OK, so the more you group, the less letters you will always use. OK, so always that's why we try and do it. Um, to simplify grouping as many possible together. Right, uh, moving on to the last one for today, OK, which is on multiplexers. Uh, multiplexers are devices which will give you logic output without using gates. OK, so mar aml blexed in Galve and Gymraeg, mar aml blexed in kind of nyddio in lle bod ni'n dynyddio a dwyon. All right. Um, now, very much in Guitha, how they work is you will put data in on the bottom, and that data will select something. Okay. Now, what I would always tell people to do here is, and it's something that you should be able to do all the time, is to put in or be able to count in binary. Right? So what I'm doing is counting from naught, and there are seven combinations going to be in total, eight combinations, which will go take you from D0 to D7. And again, so this is something you need to practice on paper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got eight combinations. So the first line, okay, will always pick a data zero. Next one will pick data one, and so on. And so the last one will pick up what data seven is. So for example, if I put in Okay, the third one pick up data two. So if I put a zero one zero amount, okay, that will pick up or give whatever this is connected to the D two line. All right. So you're selecting the data line by using logic on the on the bottom. Right now, here's an example of um, um, uh, using a multiplexer to the Amber Blexith. A question that they would commonly ask, OK, is why is it that um, you, you could use a, a multiplexer instead of logic gates? Now, the main thing for you to do or explain if a question asks that is that a multiplexer, my AML Blexith and Hableg Yawn Yawn, OK, it is flexible. Because what you can do is you can reprogram it. OK, so you can I'll Ragleni Iroi Indrew Ashbon Himoin. It'll give you any output that you want to. Right? So you might think yourself, why don't you use multiplexers all the time? 
The thing is, multiplexers are more expensive than using logic gates. So sometimes if you know you're going to have to uh, reprogram something to give you certain functions, yeah, you'd use a multiplexer. Uh, apart from that, you'll always try and use um, logic gates. Right, and the then we go over in Q3 output, OK, and how would you wire it up? So when you're wiring up this one, OK, so S, two zeros, if you put two zeros in, it would basically give you choose D0. Now D0 in this case would be two zeros would go in, you want the zero to come out. So you would tie it to the zero line. OK, so two zeros there would choose the D0 line. D0 line for Q3 has to be zero. Right, if you put in in not one, in not one, you would want the zero again. So not one would choose the D1 line. You want the zero for that one. For the next one, if you put a one zero in, a one zero would give you or uh, you would want a zero again. So you would tie it to the zero line. Uh, in Dresav, Ospedachin Roy Meun or Ina Ian. If you put in one, two ones, you want a, a one to come out. So then you would wire it up to get the five volts because five volts would represent a one. OK, uh, what I've done there now is basically give you a quick run through on uh, logic. OK, the essentials of logic and things that you need to remember and uh, for the multiplexers, maybe just remember the fact that they are flexible and um, we have leg. OK, uh, if you are running through this on YouTube videos or whatever, OK, then stop and pause. OK, so for example, uh, when I was explaining about the pull up and the pull down, OK, try and work out before I play the video, what will be the logic levels coming out of those, OK, before they're being played. Uh, as I said about the logic gates, yeah, put them down on a piece of paper, cover them up, and then basically do your truth tables and check them out from there. Okay, so the next session, which will be tomorrow, okay, I'll be moving on to explain about timers, okay, about using capacitors, and I hope to see you then. Thank you very much.